people gathered here to this interesting uh, symposium. We are going to discuss training and testing. And uh, there will be three interesting talks. And uh, there will be my presentation first. And uh, I will try to deal a little bit with this uh, topic about how to do fitness testing and training in football. And to choose Okay, so I have to walk with it. I have to work. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, performance in football, we have to remember that that's not the only the physiological aspect as we are going to discuss more intensely during the uh, talk this afternoon, but we definitely have also the tactical, technical factors and at top level, definitely also the psychological factors. Or even at a lower level, the psychological factor is so important. And I'm a coach uh, that happens to know a little bit about physiology, so the questions may be related to the coaching role afterwards. But let me just take you through some of these aspects first. The four main areas are influencing performance, and uh, we are going to discuss the physical aspect in more details today. So, what is that then depending on? The performance in, you may say, in any sport is depending on a number of factors. And if we are talking about all the terms of football, we have an endurance performance aspect. We have the ability to perform high intensity exercise repeatedly during the game. We have sprint performance. And we have force development in single actions. Kick in, in football, actions with uh, in fights in rugby, for example. And these factors are also depending on the ability of the neural system uh, having a significant influence on the force you can develop in a single action. There are a number of external factors that are influencing performance, like the temperature, as we heard this morning, humidity, altitude, field condition, and nutrition is another external factor that we are able to manipulate. But that's what leads what we believe. The accumulation of potassium does have an influence, and we can change it by training. That's good, isn't it? Good news. So how should we train them? That would be the next. But before that, we just have to summarize what we're dealing with in any code of football, repeated high-intensity exercise. We are seem to see that fatigue does occur temporarily during the game, and there's large individual differences. So, now we're just ready to discuss the topic, how to test, how to train. So, how to test, and I'll do it very briefly. I've just highlighted uh, the usual intermittent recovery test that some of you are familiar with. <laughs> but before I do that, we should remind why should we do these tests. We discussed that a little bit the first day. Do we need the test or do we not? The only one to decide upon that is the coach. What is the purpose of that? One purpose could be to study the effect of a training program. Maybe you have changed the training, you want to see how that works. You may be tired of motivation and give the players feedback. Is that important? Yes, it is, even in top class football. You need to give them feedback you need to take them on board, these guys. Yeah. Was one sleeping on the corner, so he's not any of them. Okay. To be aware of what you're doing. Is that important? Yes. yes. It is, even at this level. No, particularly at this level. Because that's what they want, these guys. They want to be better. That's why they play at the top level. Everybody wants to be better. And now you have a tool suddenly to discuss what can be improved. <coughs> Ready for competition? Yes, you have normal values, you have rehabilitation phase, and you look at what are the actual stages of that particular player. Short and long-term planning. Can we get an idea? Where are they now? Where do we want to go? What do we need to do? Seems to be reasonable questions. That's the questions we ask as coaches, anyway. But in order to make that successful, what do we need to do? We need to make a test that's appropriate for what we're dealing with. And for gas, we did a 
first church with him. Is that appropriate for him? Yes! That's, he's a world class player in the first touch, for example. So you can have a test of the first touch. And you may not need to do a test because, as a coach, you can observe whether that works or do not work. But for some aspects, it may be useful actually to have objective measures. And, and the OO intermediate recovery test can be used in terms of getting an idea about the ability to perform repeated high intensity work. It's a recovery test. It's not always the feeling like a recovery test, but we are going to be testing the ability to be able to recover from the previous exercise. They have 10 seconds to recover, and then they do another two times, 20 minutes. So it's a recovery test. Let us just briefly go through that then. <coughs> there are two levels. One is starting at a higher speed, and that's the level two, and then it increases the speed rather rapidly, as you see here compared to the level 1 test. The level 1 test is for players that are not that well trained. The level 2 are for top class players. Heart rate measurement. Yes, you get an increase in heart rate as you do see. This is the level 1. The level 2 test you see up here, you reach the maximum heart rate at the end. And this is the level 2 test. The level 1 test, sorry. And there you reach the maximum heart rate anyway. For this same player here, you have blood lactate response indicating that glycolysis is significantly elevated during that type of test, which is also clear from measurements of uh, fossil lactate and creatine phosphate, as you see here. This is the level 2 test. This is rate of lactate accumulation in the last part of the test compared to the level 1 test. So you see a significantly higher elevation of anaerobic energy production, also indicated by a higher utilization of creatine phosphate. So it actually triggers and triggers the anaerobic system. And uh, if you then compare values obtained from top class players, now we just compare the server players, you see values up here for this uh, level uh, one test. And you see this is moderate level players have a lower performance, the sub elite has an even lower, and then you're going further down. We also have some rock players in there. So there seems to be some correlation between the performance and uh, on the test and performance in real life. And the same is the case for the level two test. As you do see, we have the top class players here, and you see moderate players, level players here, and you see again these are the black ones to be compared, sub elite. So the higher the level of performance, also the better they perform in the yo-yo intermediate recovery test. And you can see these differences even in the same league. This is the bottom team as you have seen them before, performing not as well as the top teams in performance. So it gives an indication that there may be a difference in the physical performance uh, between the top and the lower level teams. You can test young players and see how they are developing and you will get an idea about that, uh, as you can see here, the black ones indicates, for example, the boys age 12 compared to boys that have reached an age of 18, <coughs> an increase as they get older, which you also would expect. Okay, it seems to be very correlated to magnetic activities, we won't go into details with that. It is not very co correlated to VO2 max. Luckily enough, because VO2 max is not expressing what you see in the football game, isn't it? But it may give you some idea, indication of the level of the player, but it's very different from the way you're working in a football game. And one example is here. The same VO2 max value gives two very different performance measures in terms of the yo-yo intermediate recovery. So VO2 max may provide you with some information, but it's not very specific for any of the football coach. Okay, and that's also indicated here because this showed changes, for example, in the preseason, and here you have changes in your intermediate recovery test of about 30%, and for the same players you had a 3-4% increase in VO2 max. So you don't see those changes just by measuring the maximum optimum. Okay. You will see a poster by Magni Morso, and he will show you some changes during the season uh, in terms of your 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 uh, performance. And here you see the typical performance improvement in the preseason. 
And what's happening during the season? Some players are maintaining their level, and some players have a significant increase. Did you detect that as a coach? Yes, hopefully you did, and understood that this guy was supposed to be doing more. But apparently, his coach didn't do that because his performance was not as good as it was when he started the season. So, simple way to actually detect whether you have a change in performance. And that's what it says here, and uh, you can read that better than I can say it. So, these are these things. So, training, how do we do this now? As this is rather easy, because we just stick with our type of training, aerobic, anaerobic training, and specific muscle training. You can subdivide that into different categories, and then you know exactly what you are training. That's the first thing, to understand what you're doing. Next thing is to understand how it does affect the player, and next thing is actually to understand when to do what. But let me just highlight this, then, the aerobic uh, and anaerobic training performed as drills. We discussed that 